Welcome to the Hero's Journey Project, episode number 22. And we are working through Golden Age comics from December 1943, appropriately enough. Christmas stuff, Christmas stuff. Might see a theme this week, coincidentally enough. Now, you might notice I'm not wearing a headset this week. It's not invisible. I have upgraded to a microphone. As the characters in the comics evolve, so does this podcast. All right, let's see which comics I've been reading this week. Again, another set of 10 comic books. First up, we have All Winners, number 11 from Timely. It's winter of 1943. Alex Schomburg cover. It's obviously got lots going on in this cover. Very exciting stuff. Namor is just destroying things. So are Human Torch and Toro. Bucking Captain America, busting some heads. You know, the usual stuff. First story was a human torch deals with a Nazi boat plane that drops bombs and sprays gas from 60,000 feet operated by the Hawk. Now, something that can fly 60,000 feet back in the 1940s was actually quite the accomplishment. Not by today's standards, of course, but back then, it certainly was, uh, it was very unheard of. Next up, Captain America infiltrates a group of Japanese spies impersonating a Chinese god that gets drug addicts to set fires in New York City. Now, what's interesting is that the drug addicts were referred to as snowbirds in the, uh, in the issue, which I want to assume referred to cocaine use, but it wasn't specifically mentioned. Next up, Submariner is captured by Tojo and put on display as a sideshow freak type of thing, as a prize, I guess, for the Japanese military. Wizard helps create, help, nope, Wizard helps a cadet avoid a life of crime after thoughts of revenge, after seeing his father killed by policemen. There was a recent CGC 4.5 sale from March 2020 for $2,400. Now this is in bold on this slide because this is going to be our big book of the week. I know we start off with the big book. Look, they're in alphabetical order. They're in the order that I read them. What do you want me to tell you? It came up first. And this issue is bigger than this one. This issue is next up. Batman 20, DC, December 1943, January 1944. It's a classic Batmobile cover. Love it. Great shot of the Batmobile on that yellow. Really nice contrast. Now, in this issue, Batman deals with the Joker's scheme to fleece wealthy individuals with a phony time machine. Batman is also featured in trial testimony about a series of safe robberies. Next up, Batman spends the day with the Harbor Patrol to see what they do on a daily basis. So this is part of the police division series. So... I believe it's in each issue. I know there was, well, I felt like it was a couple back now, but Batman spent the day with a different uh, police division. And so this is sort of a feature that they've got going on. Next up, Bruce Wayne loses guardianship over Dick Grayson and Batman gets him back. So it's all good. Now, there's a recent CGC 9.4 sale from November 2020 for $26,400. This is a big book, no question. The only reason I put the All Winners book as the book of the week, because I feel that it would sell higher in a 9.4 than this comic would have. It's certainly, uh, I believe, more scarce as well in terms of the census. Next up, we have Blue Beetle 28. This is from Holly Oak, December 1943. You got a little bit of Holly on the cover there. Shows that it's a December issue for sure. This cover reminds me a lot of James Bond, right? On the skis with the gun. Anytime I see someone on a skis, on skis with a rifle, with any kind of uh, long barreled gun, I'm gonna say, reminds me of James Bond. So the first story is continued from Bibi, buh, 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 Blue Beetle, number 27. Blue Beetle's double is on the loose and fools Dan's new girlfriend. It looks like a German super bomber has taken out New York City. Very crazy stuff. Now, I'll tell you, this weird uh, arc, serial, whatever you want to call it, is so convoluted. It's one of those comics where 
there's information in one panel and you're really supposed to draw out a lot of information and assume a lot of other stuff going on. It's very choppy. The art's terrible. So this is one book where I'm really looking for some sort of evolution for the character and the art and the story, all that, all at once. I know Blue Beetle does a lot of uh, better stuff in the modern age. So uh, certainly we'll look forward to that over time. Next up, while Blue Beetle is in Canada, he tracks down some murdering Nazis who are trying to start a rebellion. Ooh. Now for this book, there's a recent CGC 5.0 sale from March of 2020 for $136. One thing to note, there's only eight uh, books on the census. So it seems like this book's a little rare, but $136, it's also not well sought after. Next up is Blue Beetle 29, Holyoke, January 1944. This continues the story from the previous issue, which continued from the one before that. So you have Blue Beetle. In this one, Blue Beetle rescues his girlfriend from Nazis and steals a German super bomber. And that actually concludes that story. Blue Beetle gets on the trail of some arsonists that leave no clues behind. Oh, this is Blue Beetle 29, Holyoke, January 1944, if I didn't say that already. You have a recent CGC 8.0 sale from November of 2020 for $1,200. Again, clearly not well sought after. So $1,200 for a fairly high grade book. But again, this, uh, you know, I have to say, it's the same convoluted story from the previous one. And cover's not great, art story, all that fun stuff. Really hoping that when it goes back to Carlton, uh, Charlton, my apologies, Charlton. When it goes back to Charlton in a couple issues, that things get a little better. Captain America Comics, number 33, Timely, December 1943. Another Alex Schomburg cover. So, of course, you know, you see it. Lots of action. Lots of stuff going on in that cover. Nazis, U.S. military. Everyone's on this cover. First up, Captain America seeks out Mother, seeks out Mother Wong's army, who took out the U.S. supply convoy for the Chinese army and turns out to be a double agent. So she's actually working for the good guys, even though she helped take out some good guys, but she was a spy. Human Torch stops the Japanese beetle and his poisonous Japanese beetles. Human Torch apparently has an office with a secretary. This didn't seem to be very uh, touched on in any other issue, so I don't know if it's the first mention of this office. While in Africa, Captain America saves some female soldiers including Betty Ross from Mongoose. Captain America takes on a ring of Japanese suicide bombers, calling themselves symbol of doom. Which reminds me of a similar story. Um, sorry, in this story, they're trying to blow up some trains that are ferrying troops around. Reminds me of a similar Captain America story that I was reading about a couple months back. Very similar. They were in a, uh, there was a ghost trying to scare away some trains and blow up tracks and stuff in a small town. Same sort of thing, along the same lines. Uh, and uh, for this one, you had a recent CGC, recent CGC 7.0 sale from May 2020 for $5,958. Now I feel this isn't quite as high as the uh, All Winners comic again, so didn't quite make the big book of the week. Captain Marvel Adventures number 30. It's from Fawcett, December 1943. So we go from Alex Schomburg cover to, I don't know, looks like uh, our buddy uh, Captain Marvel shipwrecked on an island here. Not as much going on in the cover. You know, it's still a fun cover. It's a fun cover. I like it. Could be a little more Christmassy, I guess. Very not traditional Christmas type cover. But sorry, right. maybe I'm just in a Christmas mood. First story, Captain Marvel stumbles onto some Nazis digging a tunnel under the U.S. Mint in Denver. Next up, Billy Batson is dropped off on a deserted island to recreate a shipwreck survivor's adventures by following the story of Robinson Crusoe and ends up catching a Nazi spy. So the cover, this story, right? Captain Marvel finds some Nazis who have taken over a castle to use for signaling enemy submarines. I will apologize. I'll do more proofreading and fix up those typos at some point. 
Captain Marvel tracks down Mr. Mind in Australia trying to take over a military base. So Mr. Mind is a recurring villain. Um, this is a serial story, serialized story. I, look, this is one of those things kind of a pain in the butt. You have four Captain Marvel stories in one issue. Why not just make them all about the same story? Instead of having one chapter uh, for 25 issues, you know, this, this would be so much easier. So look, I was just reading these one at a time because it's a lot of story. Because I'd have to read four stories just to get the one chapter. Look, you're going to have to bear with me. There was a recent CGC 6.0 sale from August 2020 for $350. Next up, Captain Marvel Jr., number 14, Fawcett, December 1943. It's uh, clearly a Christmas cover. Look at uh, Shazam Santa there. It's awesome. First story, Captain Marvel Jr. takes on Dr. Savannah, Savannah, who has gained the strength of 200 men. Captain Marvel Jr. joins some maroon survivors of a shipwreck on a treasure hunt. Sounds like fun. And the third story, Captain Marvel Jr. contends with a gremlin having some fun by making a man think he can fly. Now, the fourth story... I couldn't find it. That's the question marks there. Uh, from what I can tell, it's called the Sinister Stamps. Probably has something to do with some stamps that are sinister. Culture. I have no idea. Um, I wasn't able to find any even a synopsis about that fourth story. It just, no one's put it in anywhere on any of the websites I could find. Can't, I couldn't, I didn't have a complete issue uh, that I could read. So... No fourth story, unfortunately. I'm very sorry. If you do find that fourth story, please let me know what it's about. I'd be very curious. There was a recent CGC 7.5 sale from June of 2020 for $505. Next up, Comic Cavalcade Numero Cinco. That's five in Spanish. Yeah, it's DC Winter 1943. Also a Christmas cover. Look, a good old Santa Claus. I have to say, the between Comic Cavalcade and World's Finest uh, Comics, the uh, the covers tend to be more lighthearted, for sure, than uh, most of the other um, superhero DC comics of that era. First up, Wonder Woman chases the cult of the Avenging Flame to the Arabian Desert. This is the first appearance of High Priestess, High Priestess, Zara. Uh, following that, Green Lantern must track down a group of thugs that are stealing original designs for upscale, clo upscale clothing. That may have been a thing back in the 40s. I don't know. Uh, not before everything was on the internet. Sargon the Sorcerer is on the case when thieves make, up with, make off with the props of stage magicians, embed real diamonds in them, return them to the magicians, and then plan to steal them back later when the heat dies down. So, I mean, these, these stories, <laughs> someone got real creative, got into the eggnog a little earlier this year, I don't know. Or that year, I guess. Not. Uh, anyway, next up, Flash deals with a plant that can communicate telepathically and create killer versions of itself with an aim to take over the world. Uh, Winky, Blinky, and Naughty appear. Now, this story, I have to say, reminds me a lot of The Little Shop of Horrors. So if you're familiar with the, uh, I believe, Broadway play and then the movie, um, <laughs> it seems to be taken uh, pretty much right out of those pages. You have a recent CGC 7.5 sale from November 2019 for $1,400. Next up, Detec Detective Comics 82, DC, December 1943. Batman plays hardball with some crooks using moves from a football playbook. Yeah, they have the signals, they have quarterbacks, and the whole bit, and all these plays and throws and kicks, and it was great. Next up, Crimson, Crimson Avenger tracks down rats in a secret maze of tunnels under the city. Tried to throw in a couple puns there for all you pun aficionados. There was a recent CGC 9.2 sale from November of 2020. For $4,080. Again, always impressed when a book's lasted almost 80 years and still in 9.2 condition. Last up, we have Flash Comics number 48. 
It's from DC, December 1943. It's an okay cover. I, I'm not a fan of the art. I, the action seems okay on the cover. All right, why not? First up, Flash sets out to help an invisible man regain some personality and attract attention, and he ends up foiling some robberies in the process. So they call him kind of an invisible man. No one seems to see him because he's got so little personality that people keep bumping into them, bumping into him, sitting him on, sitting on him on the bus because they don't realize he's taken. And hey, where's that guy? Oh, he's been here the whole time. All oh, right, one of those goofy things. Next up, Johnny Thunder accidentally saves the only resident on a remote island from a Japanese invasion. So Johnny Thunder, of course, great intentions still managed to solve the problem accidentally. Hawkman is looking for presents all over town while Black Mike and his gang are pulling a bank job. So his recent CGC sale from March 2020 for $741. All right, that's it. That's our 10 comics. We're still in December 1943. I will keep working on those for the next little bit. Again, it's big month, end of the quarter, all that stuff. Some are winter type issues, but um, the cover seems to, they seem to be the cover date seems to be around December. So, bear with me. It's uh, according to my fancy spreadsheet that I put together. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Until next time.